Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. Today I have the great honor in introducing you all to this, the newest challenge, the greatest spectacle, the most magnificent celebration of raw physical excellence short of the Olympics themselves. From the Gloucester County Fairgrounds in Malika Hill, New Jersey, I'm Alex Cunningham alongside William Marchese. Will, the moment is finally here for our main event, the Pro Obstacle Challenge. I am so excited right now. We have eight of the best male competitors and four of the best female competitors taking on this daunting obstacle course in head-to-head -head competition. And with that, let's take a look at the women's bracket. Rachel Degas won our close qualifier yesterday. She called her shot and challenged Mickey Perella. And the winner of that semifinal will take on the winner of our other semifinal, Avery Glantz and Ava Colasanti. We'll see the two winners of the semifinals face off in the finals, and don't worry about those other ladies because we will have a third place match. Thank you, Alex. First, our competitors take on the road flares. They must run across a series of pipes to reach the rope swing that leads them to the next obstacle, Cargo Chaos. An angled cargo net where the competitors must find the best path to reach to the top of the net on the other side. Obstacle 3 is the wagon wheels. Using their hands, competitors must traverse the perimeter of a pair of free-spinning wheels. The wheel's momentum can either help or hinder them. Obstacle 4 is boardwalk. Competitors must cross a series of angled boards that are hanging at different angles in order to reach the landing platform on the other side. Obstacle 5 is rooftop rumble. This is a balance obstacle where competitors must run across the top of a trapezoid that can easily tilt if they lead too far to one side. Obstacle 6 is zigzag, where competitors must climb a series of diagonal pipes that lead directly into the girder, a skinny beam that offers little purchase for our competitors to hang from. Obstacle 8 is the monstro climb. This is a series of small cliff holds arranged parallel to each other, forcing our competitors to make 180 degree transitions. This is the ultimate test of strength and grip. And the final obstacle is the heavenly ascent. Using whatever strength they have left, competitors must traverse the rope that starts horizontally, but forces them into a vertical position the further they go. Press the buzzer first, and you move on to the next round. Well, we're going to go down to the course right now for the first match. Our number one seed from the close qualifier was Rachel Deguts, and she got to call her shot, and she's challenged Nikki Perella. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for our first... It is time for our first bout of the afternoon. In the blue lane, our fourth seed from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Nikki Perella. And in the red lane on my left, our first seed and top qualifier from East Brunswick, New Jersey, Rachel DeGuts. Rachel, at the top of your screen, one of our many Sen City athletes competing here this weekend, Nikki Perella in the bottom lane. Again, Rachel got to choose her opponent and chose Nikki. Will that strategy pay off? It's uh, time to find out. Nikki literally throwing down her crown to see if she can beat Rachel. Rachel out of the gate faster, but and it's still a nice early. high grab as yeah. well on Cargo Chaos. She'll be the first onto wagon wheels. You can see they do spin a little bit. It's going a little bit against Rachel, actually, and a little bit with Mickey. Yeah, if you, the best strategy is to try to get the wheels to spin in your favor. Nikki got a little bit of that. Rachel, not so much, and they're pretty even at the moment. And Nikki's actually going to touch the rope first. That wow. will matter immensely if they both fail boardwalk. And you can see Rachel's going for it right now. Yeah, Nikki opting to take a rest. You are allowed uh, to take a rest here. Uh, and however, Rachel deciding to try to get ahead and if she completes this obstacle, she will have the lead. But if she fails, Nikki actually wins. That's exactly right, Will. Rachel looking good though onto the rings. You can see she's grimacing a little bit. I talked to her yesterday and she said that's just her game face. Yeah, she's got through the ring portion onto the last board now. 
and this dismount will be crucial because don't. that'll give her the lead. And there, there it is. There we go. Nikki, however, is uh, starting to get ready to start the boardwalk with a big lache off the platform, using momentum to her favor. Rachel opting to rest before the rooftop rumble. Well, she knows that Nikki has to beat this obstacle in order for the rooftop rumble to even matter. Now going, but oh, there goes no. Nikki! Could not grab that first ring, and that means that Rachel Deguts is on to the finals. A big celebration from Rachel, and the crowd lets her know they're uh, Nikki gave her best effort, uh, made sure she took the maximum amount of time she could take, but unfortunately just couldn't handle the boardwalk transferring to that race. Ladies and gentlemen, our second race of the afternoon. To my right in the blue lane, our third seed, seed from Lacey, New Jersey, Ava Colasanti! <laughs> And to my left in the red lane, our second seed from Lafayette Hill, Pennsylvania, Avery Glantz. Two women who know each other very well from the NL circuit. I'm sure they've trained together a lot. They've competed together quite a bit, but never quite like this. It's interesting. Avery almost got the number one seed in our qualifiers yesterday, missed by one second. I wonder who she would have chosen if it would have been Avery or Nikki, but either way, she now has to deal with Avery. Or Ava. Well, you can see Avery moving right along here, as is Ava, I think. Actually, Avery's gonna take one extra swing, which gives Ava a brief advantage. Who's gonna grab that rope first? It is Ava. And that is key, just in case they both fail the boardwalk. Now, Ava's chalking up while hanging. This is interesting. Yeah. Now, Avery's going to roll up just as she did in the closed qualifier. And now Ava's Ava... Ava's using her feet to climb up to the rest portion. Interesting decision. Oh, whatever works. <laughs> the, both women showing support to each other. I could hear Avery tell Ava, you got this. And I mean, it is a head-to-head -head race, but the beauty of our sport is that the competitors are cheering each other on, wanting each other to do well, just as they want themselves to do well. You know what? There's a lot of sportsmanship in this sport, and that was just a big example right there. Well, Avery going to have a brief advantage starting the boardwalk first. But you can see Ava getting right up to where Avery is. It's going to be, it's neck and neck right now. So let's see how they handle these, you know, let's see how they handle these ranks. Now, Ava had a little bit bigger of a swing, and you can see Avery, because she didn't have as big of a swing coming off the previous rings. Oh, the dis dismount here is scared. going to be key. We're going to see how they handle the rooftop when seeing how close they are to each other. Avery lands first. And she is going to, thankfully for her, have the rooftop rumble all to herself. So... Avery with a slight advantage in progression and time. And it looks like they're gonna take a rest before taking on the zigzag. And now this is where strategy really comes into play. It's not so much at this point who's the fastest that might win this race, but who's able to recover the fastest. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting because it's all about strategy and timing. You want to be able to rest, but if your opponent starts going, you might be tempted to try to keep up with them. This is a race after all. Of course it is. Well, both women using up as much of their time as they can. Yeah, it looks like they're going for the maximum time limit, and it's going to be interesting to see if Ava will start the same time as Avery, and she chooses to. Ava taking off about a second earlier. And they're on the zigzag portion about the same time. This is where the heat of today starts to come into play. It's a very hot day. Those bars aren't particularly hot, but certainly hotter than one in a gym, and they are neck and neck through the girder. Both going on the one side technique. Avery gets there first. This so, is key. So Avery has the advantage. Ava now must beat Monstro Swing in order to take this race. Yes, and what's really key here is that 
in our qualifiers, we saw the women have a lot of difficulty on this monstro climb. And so far, no woman has cleared it in official gauntlet competition. If there's going to be a first time, now is the time. Avery would obviously love to, to put Ava under the gun, but Ava must clear it in order to stay in this race. And after that, even if they do clear it, they still have the Heavenly Ascent afterwards, which can be a game changer. They but both chose shorts, which could cause some rope burn if they get there. At the same time, you know, sometimes you just need comfort getting through obstacles. Makes sense to me. All right, they both get off after their maximum rest. And they used every single second of those rests. Ava a little ahead of the pace. Avery starting to struggle a little bit. This ring will give her a little bit of relief on those one and a half inch ledges. That birdhouse ledge is going to be a real test for both of them. Ava gets past it. Avery gets past it. That's where she failed both no! times in the close qualifier. Spoke Ava to with the jump. She just has to touch that rope, but she's starting to lose steam. Oh, that's all she has to do is touch it. And she there does. Is. Ava Colasanti will be moving on to the finals. Now, I presume at this point she knows that, and she does, and she's going to take a drop rather than use up her energy on the rope. Yeah, I don't blame her with that decision. That rope will take up a lot of energy. It's just trying to do the whole thing. Take the rest. Try to conserve your energy for a very tough opponent in Rachel. And a rest opponent as well. Ava essentially had to go the distance beating Monster Climb, which she did. That was a task that Rachel was unable to do in the closed qualifier yesterday. That is true, but also keep in mind that the conditions yesterday were slightly different and she only took one of her two runs. This is true. Well, we'll see if Ava is able to get back to where she was in the finals from what she just did in the semifinals. Rachel, meanwhile, we don't know if she's going to be able to beat Monster Climb. Obviously, as obstacle fans, we hope she is. But we're going to give those two competitors some rest and head over to our third place match. And now, ladies and gentlemen, about to determine third place in the women's bracket, in the blue lane to my right from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Nikki Perella! And to my left in the red lane, from Lafayette Hill, Pennsylvania, Avery Glantz! Avery's had a chance to rest and get into some dry clothes. In fact, all four of our women failed to complete the course in the first round. Yeah, Although, to, to be... She did stay dry because she yeah. was able to hop off of rooftop rumble. But let's see if Nikki can do better this time around. Oh, almost hits her head there on the cargo chaos. And with both athletes on that cargo, it does swing quite a bit. You can see Avery was moving out a lot, and that was causing Nikki some trouble. Now let's see if they can get these wheels spinning on the wagon wheels. No spin for Avery. And but some spin ooh, for Nikki. She might actually yeah. get to the rope first. Uh, ooh, Ava went, Avery went for it, but missed. Oh, that was razor thin. We're going to have to see who got there first. And both athletes pulling up to rest just as they have all week long. Yeah, it's, uh, the, it's going to be real key to see how long these two will rest. Nikki used her full rest last time and still could not complete the boardwalk. So it's going to be interesting to see if she can pull it off this time. In fact, Nikki has yet to beat the boardwalk in competition. We saw Avery beat it just a moment ago. And in fact, it looks like Nikki's getting into position to try it right now. Oh, she's going a lot quicker. She's going to use that technique from last time. And then pull Great start. Yeah. Avery having to start all the way from the back end of the first board. What has Nikki learned? If there is a time to beat the boardwalk, it is now. now she's got the ring. She's got the second ring. Going for the third ring. Smooth Avery transition. Has the ring. Things looking good for Nikki. Oh, Nikki's a little caught. Uh oh, Avery's stuck. Oh, no. Avery's stuck. She's going to have to build up a swing to one of those two rings. Looks like she's going behind her. But she's starting to swing side to side. Nikki, no! No, Nikki lost her grip on that third board. And Avery is is in no man's land. She is swinging side to side. That is not where you want to go. She has to try 
to change her momentum and swing to that third ring. Shaking out because she has completely lost her swing. And the issue is we're not even sure in the booth who actually has the lead heading into this obstacle. So she may need to complete this. We don't know. Avery, we know she can beat this obstacle, but she is, she must start to be gassed here. And she goes Whoa. for the ring behind her to try to build up a swing. And she just didn't have the extension. We will have to check with Ninja Works to see who won that race, because we have no idea that was oh. razor thin. Perella, Perella, it says here, Nikki Perella actually got there first. By nine hundredths of a second, Nikki Perella takes third place. Wow. What a turn of events by literally milliseconds. Nikki managed to pull it out and earn herself on the podium for third place. An incredible race. We wish that we could have seen some athletes beat Boardwalk in this race, but if they're only gonna get through wagon wheels, that's the race I want. Yeah, both women get put in a lot of effort to try to get through, but the ringed portion of the Boardwalk just, it just tripped them both up. And now we're going to see who's going to take first place, whether it's going to be Rachel or Ava. They've had a chance to rest, and they both know this course very well. Who is going to be the strongest, and who is going to be our first gauntlet champion? Let's send it down to Greg Schwartz. To my right, in the blue lane, from Lacey, New Jersey, give it up for Ava. Colasanti! And to my left, in the red lane, our top seed from New Brunswick, New Jersey. East Brunswick, New Jersey. Too many towns in New Jersey. Rachel DeGuts! The best in the biz, Greg Schwartz counting them in for our incredibly excited audience that seems to be growing by the second. And Will, the key to this race for me is that Rachel is more rested, not only having watched an extra race, not only having done boardwalk, but Ava missed the closed qualifier due to a non-COVID illness. She may or may not be 100%, and we're gonna find out who is at their best in this final race. And it looks like Rachel has a it's also worth mentioning that Ava completed the Monstro climb, which is something that Rachel has not. Rachel getting that spin on the second wagon wheel. Looks like Ava is going to get to the rest bar first. We will see if Rachel is going to take a rest again. Or she's going to go straight forward again. She's going to take a rest. I think that's the smart strategy. They both got to the rest point at about the same time. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think she's going to use the rest solely because she knows Ava can go deep into this course and you really cannot afford a fall early in this race. This is for the gold. We will crown a champion by the end of this race, and both women really want it. Absolutely. I think both women are going for that buzzer at the end of the course. This is going to be their last run of the weekend, and surely they both want that buzzer. I mean, do you blame them? Oh, not at all. Yeah. Even You know what? I say even if your opponent falls early, you go for the buzzer. It's the last round. You don't have to worry about future races. Exactly. So I believe they have a minute to rest. Or is it 45? I think it's 45 days. It is. Okay. There's a bit of a miscommunication. Where's Rachel now going? Ava going for the lache. You can see those boards do tip a little bit if you don't stay centered on them. Ava's staying centered and the board's not tipping at all. And this is what caught up Avery a moment ago. But both women moving through these rings. Ooh, very, very smooth, good. very smooth indeed. Who's gonna get to that platform first? Looks like Rachel is in a slight lead. Who's gonna get the dismount though? And it's it's Rachel. Rachel. And Avery. Ava. Ava, sorry. Goes for the rooftop rumble first. Nikki, uh, Rachel uh, is opting to rest before the rooftop rumble and presumably rest after the, the rooftop rumble as well. I think that's the strategy she's going for. Again, she knows that she's probably going to have to beat the monster climb 
something she failed to do in the closed qualifier yesterday. So Ava opted for the distance advantage, at least for the time being, but will it pay off? I wonder if it even occurred to Ava that she could get rest on both platforms. Well, you know what? That might be uh, one of the disadvantages to not being able to compete in the uh, qualifier yesterday. Less time to strategize. Of course, Ava coming off of that illness. We don't know how much at 100% she is. And Rachel. Now Rachel going across. And now Ava's getting the ready to go. She wasn't in position. And she goes right at the perfect moment and Rachel using up some of her rest. Yep, this is exactly what we speculated. Rachel going for maximum rest time and we'll see if it pays off as Ava extends her lead as she heads into the girder. She's gonna go one-sided. That's what she did in that match against Avery. And now she's on to the rest bar. Rachel starting to eye up these two obstacles. The sun is blazing, and so we're going to see if that plays into advantages because Rachel's wearing sunglasses. Hard to tell from our vantage point, but the sun is essentially coming from the tower. You can sort of see shadows. Rachel. Oh, they're coming up on camera. Yes, Rachel is now completed the girder. They're both resting. Ava will have to start first if they both use their maximum rest time. But of course, if Ava beats this and the Heavenly Ascent, she's got the win in the bag, and Rachel, that strategy will not pay off. She essentially has to bank on Ava failing one of these hey, next two uh, and then once Ava starts moving. beating them herself. You got Rachel or, once at the very moving. least, being able Ava, to catch her. Go. That's you, go! Okay, she's now going. The judges are gonna give her a little bit of a grace. It's, uh, it can be sometimes mm -hmm. confusing because both uh, rest warnings are the same for both competitors, tonally. She's getting a little bit hung up, reaches out for that birdhouse that is a little bit liftier than the cliff. Rachel's and now she's gonna have to get this jump. Rachel's prepping to start herself. Well, now we're gonna find out she's gonna have to beat it, and she makes that last jump, has to get to the rope. Can she grab it? Yes, and All now right. she can walk her feet in. So here's the situation. Rachel has to complete the course and has to complete it before Ava. Ava doesn't necessarily have to complete the course if Rachel fails. But Rachel's made it further than she did in the closed qualifier. It's just that jump remaining. This is a personal best for her, but she's looks like she's starting to struggle a little Will bit. Will that rest pay off? She's got yeah. it. Yeah. No! no! Had it for a second and then lost it. Ava climbing for the win to celebrate with her trophy. Ava Colasanti, your gauntlet champion, and going for the exclamation point. At this point, there is no pressure left to finish because she is already our champion, but she is doing it for pride. She is doing it for glory. She's doing it for that beautiful trophy at the top of the tower. And not only that, but the cheering fans encouraging her to continue. She is inching closer and closer. The tough part of this obstacle is that the further along you go, the more vertical your climb gets. And no. Oh, she ran out of gas, but essentially a victory lap. Ava Colasanti, your first ever Gauntlet Pro Obstacle Challenge. Congratulations, Ava. A heck of a race. She went essentially the distance, making it all the way to Heavenly Ascent in both of her runs. Yeah, it was a very toughly earned battle. Both rounds, her opponents forced her to complete the monstro climb, and she was able to do it both times. Couldn't complete Heavenly Ascent, but at the end, it didn't matter. Her opponents were unable to match her progress, and she is our first female champion. Let's send it back up to the tower where Greg Schwartz is about to present the first ever gauntlet trophy to Ava Colasanti. And in first place, your gold medal winner and champion of the gauntlet, Ava Colasanti! And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, Ava Colasanti, our very first gauntlet champion. What a tournament this was.
certainly was. For William Marchese, I'm Alex Cunningham, and we're looking forward to seeing you next time on the Gauntlet Pro Obstacle Challenge. The Gauntlet Pro Obstacle Challenge is brought to you by Ninja Works, the ultimate in ninja timing systems. Goliathon. It's not a race, it's a mission. Send City Academy, helping you reach your full potential in ninja. Monstro Ninja Holds, go bigger, go Monstro. And our thanks to Imagine Ninja Productions, a full service videography, photography, and production team. Welcome back to Gloucester County Fairgrounds here in Mullica Hill, New Jersey for the Gauntlet Pro Obstacle Challenge. I'm Alex Cunningham alongside William Marchese, and this time, Will, we're focusing on the men. Oh, this is going to be a good one. Based on the closed qualifier yesterday, a majority of our male competitors today have already completed the course at least once. So everyone is going to have to go deep into this course if they want that championship. And these are elite athletes. Not only did most of them qualify for the NNL World Championship, the others obviously advancing through our open qualifier, they had to get through our closed qualifier just to get to this main event. Oh, and it was a intense uh, challenge, and these whoever wins this tournament is going to earn it. Absolutely. Let's send it to the start line where our first race is about to begin. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now that time, that glorious time, to commence the men's stage of the tournament. In the blue lane, on my right, our eighth seed from Indianapolis, Indiana, Eric Shepard. And to my left, in the red lane, our number one seed and top qualifier for the men, from Lakeville, Massachusetts, Noah Munier. Noah Munier, as Greg just said, is our number one seed. Not only that, he was the number one seed after round one, and then went out and beat his time. And he beat his time by like 30 seconds. Eric was unable to complete the course uh, in the qualifier in either of his runs, so he has a tall task ahead of him if he wants to beat Noah. Noah was two of our three analysts picked to win the whole thing. It starts with round one, and Eric is going to have an advantage as Noah grabs the back of the net. A change in strategy, I believe, from yesterday. Yeah, that certainly was. Eric, Eric. with a great wow. pull on wagon wheels. Oh, they are wow. at identical times to the boardwalk, and now Eric's going to go for the boardwalk first. Wow, interesting. Noah does a quick rest for chalking up, but Eric is taking the lead here. I think he just knows what Noah's capable of and knows he has to go for it. A quick rest from Noah. I think Noah realizes that Eric has failed to beat this course so far and that he can take his foot off the gas a little bit. Uh, that vertical section, very tricky, but it looks like both our competitors were able to master it as Eric continues his lead on this race. This is not the outcome I was expecting so far. And keeping up the gas as Whoa. Noah goes right for zigzag and that forces Eric to go. He thought he had some time, but Noah proves him wrong. Uh, Noah was able to use that rooftop rumble as a running uh, uh, startup into the rope for the zigzag. And now Noah is in the lead heading into Monstro Climb. That goes to show you the speed of Noah Munier. He actually took a rest on boardwalk. Eric did not, but yet he is the fastest to the second crux point on this course, the Monstro Climb. So both men are allotted a 45 second rest at each rest point. Noah will have to start first because he got there first, assuming they both use their maximum time. If you saw the women's qualifier, only Ava Colasanti was able to beat this obstacle. And for these men, it is so much harder. They're gonna have a six foot and eight foot jump. And they are pretty much identical onto the six foot jump. Noah's got it. And he's got the eight footer. Now Eric on the six footer. No! no, he's down. Noah will reach up for the rope and that will finish off this race. And Noah taking his time getting to the rope and Actually, he's, not, I, yeah, he's not even gonna do it. He's gonna use the trust to get to the, get to dry land because he already knows that he reached the monstro climb first and thus secured the victory. 
I mean, they did use up a little bit of energy climbing up to the truss, but he wants to stay dry. I don't blame him. It saves a little bit of energy changing, I guess. But in any event, Noah Munier advancing to the second round as so many expected and looking very good doing it. You know what, I have to give Eric a lot of credit. He did not make this easy for Noah. He actually took the lead early on in the course, but Noah was just able to play super catch up, take the lead and complete what Eric could not. Oh, 100%, Eric brought the fight to Noah. And frankly, I don't think Noah was expecting to have to turn on the gas this soon. And he really did it after rooftop rumble. Well, it was a good look and we're going to I know. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Congratulations. Noah. He's moving on to the semifinals. Uh, now let's get ready for our next uh, quarterfinal matchup and see who else will be moving on to the semifinals. Ladies and gentlemen, our second heat in the men's tournament. To my right in the blue lane, the number five seed, Josiah Pipel. And to my left in the red lane, the number four seed, James Sanella. Sen City athletes. Will, are you ready for Sen City versus Sen City? Oh, 100% af Alex. Both these men are capable of going fast on this course, and I'm excited. And they're both very explosive athletes as well. James was doing corkscrew front flips off of the tower yesterday. So Josiah going the backwards route. That's what he was doing yesterday. Not yeah. the fastest technique, but it does give you a little bit of a rest Ooh. on your arms, I guess. Both, both men going for the spin. And Josiah explosive out of the boardwalk. James has to do a little bit of catch up now. Josiah. Oh, close grab there. He grabbed it uneven. James well, it with an excellent out. grab. Now James got to build up his swing for that transfer as Josiah finishes the boardwalk and now finishes the rooftop rumble. And James is going to run right into zigzag. Josiah opted to take his break. And that means that if James Sanella gets through girder faster, which it looks like he is on pace to do, oh, Josiah yeah. is going to have to beat Monstro Climb. And there we go. And indeed, James, James yeah. is a little bit faster. Now, both men were able to complete the Monstro Climb yesterday in our closed qualifier. So I expect this to be decided on the rope. But we'll have to see both men opting for that full, what appears to be the full 45 second break after a just explosive start from both of them. I've just been confirmed in my earpiece by Ninja Works that James got there first. So he's gonna have a slight advantage here if they were to both fall. Correct. And, and Josiah, some... knowing that, is gonna go first. James had one of the smoothest techniques I've ever seen here on Monstro Climb. The 180 going for twists all the way down. Yeah. And Josiah has just destroyed this obstacle. Yeah, very interesting, different techniques, but they both get through Josiah, like you said, a little bit faster. And now we have a race. Josiah has patented this kind of slide technique on his inner thigh. James, James going with a more traditional yeah. route and Josiah with the edge on the rope. James looks like he's scrambling a little bit to try to catch up. Knowing How that much Josiah... energy does Josiah have left in the tank? Oh, this is the, this is the he's difficult. He's leaning by a length. He's got two or three more pulls. He's going to make it. It looks like it's going to be Josiah. But here comes James Sinella. Oh man, Josiah's Josiah's at the buzzer. Oh, he's Josiah. got it. Yes. Josiah Pipel with an incredible win. And James finishes just short of Josiah. An excellent run from both these men. I... And not only that, 217 out of Josiah, just one second slower than what Noah won with. We talked about it in the pregame show. And there's another splash from James Sanella. Unfortunately, he's eliminated. And that's the last splash we're going to see from him this weekend. Josiah taking the win by just about 11 seconds. And more importantly, we were talking in the pregame show about maybe he was holding back. He was just one second slower than Noah's winning time in the closed qualifier. Oh, that was an impressive run. A definitely a run to show the rest of the competitors that whoever faces him is going to be in for a bad time. And I have bad news because that person is Noah Munier. 
Yo, boy. That is going to be an incredible semifinal match. But in the meantime, we have two athletes on the start line for our next quarterfinal match. Ladies and gentlemen, our third heat of the first round of the men's tournament. To my right, in the blue lane, from Aurora, Illinois, Elias Mull. And to my left in the red lane, from Wellesley, Massachusetts, the number two qualifier, Paul Woods. Elias has come the farthest to be here. He's from the Chicago area, trains at Ultimate Ninjas under two legends of our sport, Jesse Lebrecht and Krista Ganji, and they were singing his praises when we were talking to them earlier in the week. But he has a tall test ahead of him. Elias had to battle in order to get into the top eight in our qualifier, and Paul Woods got there with relative ease, so Elias has his work cut out for him in this race. And I wonder if that's gonna change Paul's strategy, but so far, keeping the pressure on Elias, hoping that Elias makes a mistake. And as we see, Paul not withholding from the gas. He's going right for it, and so is Elias. Neither men are resting. Now, Elias on his first run did fall here in the qualifier. Let's Great see. Great jump there by Paul. Elias, no! oh, he lost his grip. I think Paul's gonna have to finish. They were real close, but of well, course he's Paul's gonna, He's right gonna make there. sure he absolutely is the winner and finishes the rooftop rumble just for fun. Your winner, Paul Woods. Congratulations to Paul, he moves on. It's a shame that we've lost Elias Mall, but a tremendous effort by Elias this weekend. Just to get into this tournament, he had to fight through it, and unfortunately he wasn't able to conquer Boardwalk on the big stage. You know what, it's not an easy course, that's not an easy obstacle, and there's no shame in falling in the vertical section of the Boardwalk. A great effort by Elias, but Paul gets a little bit of a rest compared to our first two winners. And I don't want to speak for you, Will, but there's absolutely a reason that I'm here in the commentary booth and not on that obstacle, because I couldn't do it either. <laughs> oh, man, like we said, we have some of the yeah. best males in the world competing here. Now let's see who will fill the final semifinal spot. Let's go back to Greg for the introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, our final race of the first round of the men's tournament. On my right, in the blue lane, the number six seed from Hamden, Connecticut, Tom Alberti. And to my left in the red lane, the number three seed from New Egypt, New Jersey, Joseph Meissner. Both of these men with great connections to the NNL. The elder Tom Alberti, the owner of Hamden Ninja Academy, and Joe Meisner, training under NNL President Chris Wolcheski at Movement Lab. Yeah, none of our analysts picked Joe, but I'm calling it right now, he's my pick to win it all. Well, he has a tall order in Tom Alberti. He was the winner of the open qualifier two weekends ago. And he had a very impressive performance in the closed qualifier, so both men are going to give it their best. And interesting here, Joe stops to chalk up more. Pocket chalk. Yeah. Meanwhile, Tom catching the vertical board. Oh, oh but he no! missed! He missed! Oh! I think Joe is gonna have to beat this obstacle, but he's beaten it twice already in the close qualifier. A stunning defeat. Tom knew he had to do something special here and went for it on the boardwalk. Joe Meisner, meanwhile, with chalk flying out of his pants, is going to finish, and he picks up the win to the delight of the crowd. Shame that we've lost Tom Alberti Ladies this early. Gentlemen, your winner, due to by default of progression, Joseph Meisner. But Joe Meisner advancing, and so much for that rest that we were talking about with Paul. Yeah, that advantage that Paul had instantly taken away. A shocking fall from Tom. We saw so much better from him the entire qualifier process that uh, that was just a freak whiff on the grab. An unfortunate mistake there for Tom Alberti. He didn't even fall in the vertical section. He fell coming off of the vertical section. Just going to show you, Bill, there are a lot of obstacles that can be failed, not just the two crux points. It just goes to show this is not just a, a physical challenge, it's a mental challenge. I think maybe Tom stopped thinking about this obstacle, he took his eye off the goal, and he just whiffed in a very unfortunate way. We know he's so much better, but unfortunately he's out. 
a wise man once told me it's not always the strongest athletes that win, it's the smartest athletes that win. You know who told me that? Who? The older Tom Alberti. Oh, no. So that's it for our quarterfinals. We're going to send it down to the course for our first semifinal with Noah Munier and Josiah Pippel. Ladies and gentlemen, our first of two semifinal races in the men's bracket. First up, to my right in the blue lane, the number five seed from Morristown, New Jersey, Josiah Pippel. And to my left in the red lane, our top qualifier from Lakeville, Massachusetts, Noah Munier. And well, you know, I realized something. All four of these ninjas that have advanced stayed dry. Uh, Noah climbed up the truss because he knew he had won on time. Josiah obviously finishing the course and the other two athletes only had to get through rooftop rumble. Well, you know what? Staying dry is a big deal because you don't have to deal with wet clothes and perhaps any leftover moisture even from changing. And this is going to be a good race. And here we go. Noah's best time on this course at 216. Josiah 217 moments ago. They're both starting from behind the net. And it doesn't seem like it's the fastest technique, but it's worked for these two. Uh, we're almost, almost at a mirror match right now, but Josiah, great turn on the wagon wheel and instantly into the boardwalk. Going for that vertical board, he's got it. He had a little bit of an awkward grab the first time, this time much better. Yeah, and now he gets, wow, that's a nice transition to the boards. Only the dismount, he's actually has a pretty nice lead heading into the rooftop rumble. Let's see how he handles the zigzag. Gonna take a, a brief rest. But Noah, Noah going right for it, he actually had a bit of a stutter yeah. step there, which caused him to lose a little bit of momentum. So now they're very, they're very even at the moment. We know both of these athletes can beat Monster Climb, but getting there is still important. It's Josiah who gets there first, and now who's going to get off of it first. So this is, like we mentioned before, is very key because if, well, unlikely, both men end up failing this obstacle, Josiah will be given the win. So if the pressure is on Noah to complete this obstacle. Which we know he can do. He's essentially three for three. I think technically he, it, it didn't count as him clearing last time. But, but he, he cleared did, he it. He did get to the end. Yeah. He just didn't hit the touch point. He's going to go first. You know what? He knows that he's slightly behind technically. So, but moreover, why isn't Josiah going? He wants the full rest, I guess. Very surprising. Meanwhile, Noah threw the eight-foot section. That last small gap is good. He's up to the wow. rope. And now he's got a huge lead as Josiah oh, falls on wow. Monstro Climb. Something must have happened. I wonder if he just got gassed on Heavenly Ascent during his last run. But Noah was once again going to head over the truss and climb down. Josiah, a stunning defeat on Monster Climb. And Noah Munier is heading to the finals. I got to say, I, I, we, were, we were wondering why Josiah was taking that rest for so long. I think that early part, I think he got a flash pump and he just hit with this big wave of exhaustion because he went down on the monster climb almost immediately. I guess that's what happened. I, I'm as surprised as you are. It looks like we're gonna be joined in the booth again by one Noah, more, congratulations. More. Congratulations, sir. Our number one, one more indeed. Yes. And, but he's been through the whole course twice now, although he hasn't had to do Heavenly Ascent. Our next two athletes, haven't had to do the back half of the course yet today. Yeah, they both have been given the same advantage, which means they no longer have advantages against each other. <laughs> but let's see what who's going to be joining Noah in the finals. Here's Paul Woods and Joe Meisner in our second semifinal. Ladies and gentlemen, our final heat before the medal rounds. To my right, in the blue lane, from New Egypt, New Jersey, Joseph Meisner. <laughs> And to my left, in the red lane, from Wellesley, Massachusetts, Paul Woods. Joe Meisner, the local boy in this match, but Paul Woods has essentially owned this course. He has run this course, I think, more than any other human being alive. Actually, that is a true statistic. Between the open, close, teen, and now this event, J uh, Paul has the most familiarity with the course. Joe opting for the front of the... 
dropping for the front of the cargo net as he progresses through wagon wheels and makes a great spin there. So Joe slightly ahead and once again going for the pocket chalk. Paul meanwhile going right for it. So it's going to be interesting to see if Joe can play catch up. Now neither men had to do the back half of the course their first run, but they do have experience from the qualifiers and their other runs. Both with great grabs. Joe, pretty high grab. I think he's going to have to shimmy down a little bit. Meanwhile, Paul oh, no. has just finished the obstacle, and he's through rooftop rumble, opting not to run into zigzag. Let's see if Joe does. And he does, in fact, run into zigzag, and that's going to close the gap a little bit. Oh, they're very close now. Paul just a little bit ahead of Joe, but looks like Paul will get there first. So he has a slight advantage heading into the monstro climb. The bad news for Paul, though, is that Joe is a master of these thin ledges. They're only one and a half inches, but Joe trains on much thinner ledges all the time. Yeah, Paul already going. I think he knows how good Joe is. He pretty he... much knows that he's going to have to clear the course at this point. Yeah. Joe did have an unfortunate slip as Paul completes the eight-footer. Joe had an unfortunate slip on the rope in qualifying, but he did clear the second time. And now Paul starting to gas out a little bit. He gets he's the onto the first. rope. But Joe only a few seconds behind. And there we go, we have a climb off once again. And Joe is the master of this rope. We talked about it in the pregame show and he's making up some time here. They are neck and neck. Joe has the lead, he has pulled ahead. They're now getting into the vertical section of the heavenly ascent and Joe is widening the gap between them. Now leading by a length and a half, he's one pull away. Joe Meisner victorious over Paul. And we're gonna have Noah and Joe in the final, but more importantly, look at what he's just done, Will. Holy cow, sub two minutes, 155.58, an amazing performance from Joe Meisner. He proved that he is the master of that rope on this course. Meanwhile, Paul trying to finish out for pride, and that is also what this sport is about. Yes. Uh, it's about doing your best. Yes, it's about being the other man, but you don't want to beat yourself. Paul Woods. An incredible race by incredible athletes. Two clears, but advancing to the gold medal round, your winner, Joseph Meissner. Moreover, Paul Woods clearing with a 228. Before this race, that was faster than anyone not named Noah Munier, and he just got beat by 33 seconds. Oh, man. Joe, that was the best performance we've seen for Joe all weekend. And I think it's going to be an intense race between Noah and Joe for the finals. I have no idea who's going to win, but I picked from the beginning. I picked Joe from the beginning, and that's who I'm sticking with. Well, Joe just had the race of the weekend. He's still got one more to go, but Paul Woods is heading right back to the start line as he's going to face Josiah Papel in our third place match. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the bronze medal race. The great contest to see who gets on the podium and who stays on the ground. To my right, in the blue lane, from Morristown, New Jersey, representing Sen City, Josiah Pippel. And to my left, in the blue lane, from Wellesley, Massachusetts, representing Vitality Fitness, Paul Woods. Good luck, gentlemen. May the best man win. And both of these athletes were pretty close in the closed qualifier as well. We know that this is going to be a great race. There is a bronze medal on the line for the winner, and here we go. So Josiah once again using the back of the net, Paul the front. Wow, interesting. Paul able to pull ahead there. Josiah right behind, gets a good swing, and takes a slight lead, and immediately into the boardwalk. Well, this is Josiah's last run of the weekend. It is time to see what he's been holding in the tank this whole time. I mean, both these men must be tired at this point. Yeah, but you can't leave a single percent of energy on the course. You've got to put it all to use here. And Josiah, very little rest before the zigzag, immediately goes into it. No rest for Paul. Josiah definitely trying to get to the monster swing first after his fall last time. 
And he has a, a pretty sizable lead over Paul. Exactly right. And now shaking out. Paul doing the same and chalking up. Yeah, the big question now is going to be how much rest are these men going to use? You're allotted a maximum of 45 seconds, but even if Josiah uh, uses the full 45, that's going to put Paul in a position, and he's not even going to wait. I think this is smart for Paul. He has energy left in the tank, so he's going to put it to use here. Josiah, no. the six-footer. Paul, the eight-footer. Got it. Oh, wow. Same yeah, with Josiah, just catching it. And now it's going to come down to the rope. We have a climb off for bronze, folks. Paul was there about two seconds quicker. Josiah using that patented sliding technique and now employing the same climb that Paul's been doing. Josiah has his legs wrapped more around the rope than Paul does. Uh-oh, Paul, Paul, Paul lost grip of his legs, and that's going to give Josiah an advantage. Josiah is now, I would say, a full body length Oh, but ahead. he's starting to run out of gas. Oh, my. This vertical section can take so much out. It's... And here comes Paul Woods. Oh, man, this is a race to the finish. Anyone can still win this, but Josiah inching ever so close. He's got to keep his legs on. He's only one pull away, I think. Oh, but this... here's Paul Woods two pulls away. Oh, God, this is this The is buzzer in sight. This is... It's going to be a race for the final pull. Who, who can reach first? Josiah. With, with this the... foot. With this foot. Hits the buzzer first. Oh, my God. What a finish! What a finish! 214 for Josiah That's Pipple. That's why this is the greatest competition in the world. That's why this is the greatest competition in the world. Will, that was incredible. I mean, 214, wow. the second fastest time. He was completely spent and then hits the buzzer with his foot. Beating out Paul Woods by about nine seconds. I think, I mean, the crowd reaction says it all. That was a race. It was, a, it was just, a, just reaching to the end. I think Josiah knew he didn't have much arm strength left, so just use your feet. Why not? I saw him try that out. I didn't think he would actually do it in the competition, and he does it in his last run of the weekend when the stakes were the highest. Man, I... That was, that was third place. That's the crazy thing. If, we still... if, if the gold medal race is as good as that race, we are in for a treat, and we might be so excited that we're in the water by the time it's over. Oh, man, who knows? But we have a championship caliber matchup for you, the finale between Joe Meisner and Noah Muir. And the key here is that Joe is so fast on the rope that he essentially made up all of the time that Noah might have made up on him throughout, are we going? Okay, sorry. The key to this race, Will, is that Joe is so fast on the rope that he was able to make up all of the time Noah saves on the entire rest of the course and some. Noah's really gonna have to put the screws to Joe and do something incredible. I think he might even wanna think about skipping the rest after Gerger and into Monster Pond. Oh boy, that's, it's gonna be a tough race for both of them. They're both very strong, very fast competitors, and this could go either way. I would not be surprised if either one of them won, and I think it's about time we find out who won. Well, the moment is here, ladies and gentlemen. Greg Schwartz is gonna count them in. Let's go to the start line. Ladies and gentlemen, Ladies and gentlemen, it is time now for one final race. A race to determine the grand champion of the gauntlet. To my right, in the blue lane, he is 19 years old, representing the Movement Lab from New Egypt, New Jersey, Joseph Meissner. And to my left, in the red lane, a mere 15 years of age, from Lakeville, Massachusetts, representing Vitality Obstacle Fitness, our top seeded qualifier, Noah Munier! Gentlemen, congratulations on having made it this far. May the best challenger win.
Noah the top seed in the close qualifier, but Joe has beaten that record. It is time to find out who has the most left in the tank. Who can beat this course the fastest? Because, Will, I think you're going to have to beat this course in this matchup. Uh, if any past uh, indication is, is shown that you're going to have to completely agree. And both these men are just, they're, they're pumped. They're just rearing to go. And we're going to see a champion reach the top of the tower. That I'm calling that right now. And uh, I, I'm still sticking with my pick with Joe. Well, two of our three analysts had Noah, and they are, I don't want to say rooting for Noah, because we, we're mainly just rooting for a great race. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so go for it. Chris says, Chris Chris says, says good. Go. All right. Gentlemen. Hey, we are joined hey. in the commentary booth by hey, the best sir? in the business, Greg Schwartz, Thank you. for Thank this you. incredible matchup. Noah Munier and Joe Meisner. What a, what a day it's been, guys. Oh, it's been exciting. Really Absolutely quick, amazing. really quick, who's your pick? For this one? Yeah. Okay. My pick for this race, I, you know, honestly, Noah is incredible, but I've seen Joe competing for a while now, and dude, especially after that, that epic finish he had earlier, I, I got to go with Joe. All right. Well, you're amongst friends here, but our analysts, the analysts picked Noah from the beginning, so we're going to have to see. Dude is who, Noah is incredible. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I would not expect, I would, I would, not, I would not be surprised if Noah won, but here we go. Here we go. Noah, the top qualifier, but Joe has the course record. They are into it. Ooh. Noah's using the back again. Joe the front, and Joe taking a lead. This is not where Noah wants to be. Yeah. Joe absolutely has had the best time on the rope, so Noah needs to extend a lead as best as he can. Once again, Joe going for the pocket chalk, allowing Noah to take a bit of a lead on boardwalk. Makes the grab of that vertical board. Uh, pretty fast catch-up for Joe, though. Yeah, this, this, this grab is very important. It can be a huge time sink if you're not careful. I would have liked to see Joe go on that first swing. And now far. Noah going right for zigzag. He knows he has some ground to make up on the rope. And so far, he is putting the distance on Joe Meisner. But here comes Joe Meisner on the zigzag. Noah will rest after Girder, but how long will he be able to? What does Joe Meisner have left in the tank? And for that matter, what does Noah? Gentlemen, I got to get on top of the tower for the celebrations. You guys are doing great. Awesome match. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Greg. And now it is down to these two athletes on two obstacles. And Noah knows he has to go first, and he does. Joe Meisner right behind him. Oh, these two are neck and neck, which is not good for Noah based on past times. But that doesn't mean he can't go faster than ever before. Good grab for Noah on the eight footer. Joe the same. And Noah the earliest onto the rope. But he's going to have to go quickly because Joe Miser's right behind him. And we know what he can do here. OK, Joe makes the 180 transfer. And he is, we're caught up. He is caught up and he is taking the lead. Noah's got to fly, but Joe Meisner is flying faster. Oh my goodness. We might have another course record here. Joe, Joe, My Joe Meisner is inches away from victory. Noah's right behind him, Joe Meisner. Joe Meisner has done it. Done it. Joe Meisner is the first gauntlet pro obstacle champion. And he did it at record time too, 154-64. Beating his previous record by just one second. And Noah presenting the trophy to Joe. Noah has been incredible all weekend. A 157 from Noah, unthinkable, just 20 minutes ago. But he has stood defeated to Joe Meisner in one of the most incredible races I have ever seen. I'm in awe right now because before, before this tournament started, we weren't sure if we were going to see sub two. Both of our first and second place finishers just did sub two. That was incredible. Joe, Joe Meisner, I mean, knew he was up against a tall order with the previous course record holder, beating his own course record, Noah beating his own record by almost 30 seconds. It, Will, I am paid to try to say words, 
and it is hard for me to come up with them right now because I am just so in awe of what we've just seen. You know what, I, I got some words for you. I think this goes to show what happens when two top level athletes are going up against each other. They push each other to go even further. The old saying, steel sharpening steel. We just saw that right there. The two best athletes of this tournament pushing each other to the limit to improve themselves and finish in record time. That was exactly what I was hoping for. 2.86 seconds separated these two athletes. That was the closest race we've had in the men or the women. They both went the distance and really both of them would have earned the victory, but Joe Meisner standing victorious and we are gonna send it up to the top of the tower where Greg Schwartz, who was just down here a moment ago, already back up there, about to preside over our award ceremony. And present Joe <laughs> with the trophy. We're running out of words. To the truest champion of all champions, with amazing grit, tenacity, and perseverance, our gold medal winner, and the gauntlet grand champion, Joseph Meister! Thanks guys. Well that closes things out here from Gloucester County Fairgrounds. From William Marchese, I'm Alex Cunningham, and we will see you next time on the Gauntlet Pro Obstacle Challenge.